Thanks, guys. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, hopefully, you guys had a great morning, and hopefully, I can start you guys off right in the afternoon. Um, I, I, I guess to get started, uh, this clicker would be useful. Um, how many of you have heard of DoorDash or used DoorDash? Show of hands. OK, so, so not, not enough of you. Um, I'll, we'll definitely have to change that um, uh, as, you know, as the afternoon wraps up. Um, so for, for those of you unfamiliar with us, uh, on the surface, we are an app and a website that allows you to order delivery from over 30,000 plus restaurants across the US and Canada. Most of these places have never delivered before. Um, underneath the hood, we are building a very powerful learning system that will unlock delivery for the last mile for local businesses in every city. And you know, today, I'd love to just share with you our story, tell you a little bit about the new type of technology company that's required in order to solve the last mile delivery problem. Um, to get started, I want to share with you, you know, the founding story of DoorDash, which actually has very little to do with delivery or with food. Um, it actually has more to do with the motivation to help small business owners. So, so my mom has been a small business owner her entire life. Uh, she's owned three different businesses. I've worked in each one of them. Dishwasher, receptionist, I, I, I've played pretty much every role. Um, and, and, and it's always been a passion of mine, as well as my co-founders, to help small businesses whenever we are able. Um, and, and I have actually here a photo with me of four of the merchants on the DoorDash platform. Um, and, and, and these are the people, um, and, and their dreams are the ones that we really wish to con continue forward and, and um, make their cities better. Uh, when we got started, we spoke with many retailers as well as restaurant owners who would show us delivery orders that they would turn down. To me, this was a bit bizarre. Um, I'm a huge believer in capital markets and efficient markets. Uh, so whenever there's demand, there usually is some fulfillment of that. And, when it, and so when I asked the restaurant owners why, they would say, well, it's not like we open these stores to become delivery people. I, I said, sure, but you know, why wouldn't anyone fulfill these deliveries for you? Um, what my co-founders and I soon learned after becoming delivery people ourselves for services um, like Domino's Pizza or, or FedEx is that we learned the first mile delivery problem in the US is very well solved. Um, it's elegant. Um, but the last mile delivery problem uh, comes with much looser promises. Drivers have hours um, to go on their scheduled fixed routes one by one, dropping off many, many packages. Um, and the premise is pretty simple. It's to deliver whenever it's convenient for the delivery service, less so when it's convenient for you, the customer. In fact, if we can't reach you, we'll put a sticker on your door to let you know that we tried. Um, in order to you know, solve delivery when it's convenient for you, the customer, the paradigm needed to change. After all, what if you wanted a package right now? What if many of you wanted to order the same type of package at the same time? Uh, this type of problem really required a new type of solution. And, and that's really the genesis, um, at least the inspiration for why my co-founders and I have spent the last three years trying to solve this problem. So let's actually talk about the problem. At its core, it's a very difficult technology problem. Um, you might not think about that when it comes to delivery, uh, but when we first you know, approached our former professors, some of the leading researchers at places like Stanford and Berkeley in computer science and operations research, they basically shared with us two sets of papers on the last mile delivery problem. The first uh, re referenced taxis and how they are dispatched as well as architected. And the second referenced multi-vehicle routing systems, um, the type of integer programming problems that FedEx has very well solved in various forms. But neither one of these things matched the problem statement um, or space that we were looking at. In our situation, we have no idea where our customers are going to order from. We don't know the quality or the level of inventory inside the stores. We don't even know how many drivers we're going to have on the road because our dashers, our fleet of independent contractors who we partner with, can turn on and off their app whenever they want. And so there's a lot of unknowns in our system in which we have to make many predictions to. In many ways, I kind of think of um, the game Go, which is illustrated here. Actually, that's the best player in the world in Go. Um, and in that game, there theoretically actually exists an infinite set of possible moves, which is very, very difficult to model. Um, and imagine if many of these games are being played at the same time, such as when many deliveries are occurring at exactly the same time. 
lunch, dinner, for example, the computing complexity becomes very, very expensive. So when my co-founders and I first approached this, we knew that the product was not the app. Yes, we have an app where customers can place an order. That's part of the process. But the complicated system to support the app, to make sure the delivery actually occurs, was much more involved. Um, in fact, to get this done, we started by building a system of software products that no one really sees. Um, our dashers don't see them, our consumers don't see them, our merchants don't see them. But there are a set of software products that make lots of predictions to answer questions like, well, how long is it going to take you know, a restaurant to prepare an item? Um, how do we know how well bicycles are going to travel on the hills of San Francisco? Or, or how well will cars travel in the crowded streets of the downtown areas? Um, when likely will a mistake occur? To figure out the answers to these types of questions, um, we effectively always have to think ahead and make predictions about where that next unit of demand and supply are going to be so that we can make the perfect match. In many ways, it does resemble um, some of the central principles behind, again, this um, picture behind me, which also um, represents when the best player in the world in Go was playing AlphaGo, a very ambitious project that the DeepMind team at Google uh, you know, embarked over four years in order to see if they could beat the best you know, player um, in the world in Go. Um, again, it is a very, very complicated set of equations that we must solve um, in advance, in real time, and then you know, quickly uh, fix things in case things don't really work out. And so the other thing we had to do was we had to assemble an extraordinary set of engineers. In fact, the reason why our early team at DoorDash um, consisted of no one with any you know, restaurant experience or operations experience didn't really have much to do with you know, the discipline. It had much more to do with what we wanted to build. We assembled a team of computer scientists and engineers, including machine learning PhDs, not because we were building a food delivery business, but because we were creating a logistics network. But technology is only half of the problem in the day-to-day -day challenge that we solve at DoorDash. Um, if, if you think about it, many times if a hangry customer um, is calling in because food has gotten cold or hasn't shown up, uh, software may not be the best solution um, in that situation. After all, we are transporting a physical product and one that is very perishable. And so the other part of this equation is really operational excellence. Um, and, and frankly, it's really a type of discipline that really hasn't um, been required in, in most uh, Silicon Valley consumer technology companies. If you think about the first generation of consumer technology companies in Silicon Valley, uh, the movement of things was really about the movement of bits. Uh, of, uh, of software, pure software. And so whenever there was an interruption, at best we're talking about, or at worst, we're talking about a digital interruption. In our world, if something broke, we're talking about empty stomachs, uh, we're talking about you know, potentially crying children, um, uh, cold food, and, and, and maybe much worse. So there certainly is an element here that is not um, a, a, just about technology. At DoorDash, we have a saying that we live at the intersection of a math problem and a human problem. And so how do you get good at also this human problem? Well, uh, everything actually starts at DoorDash with a checklist. Um, it's very similar to a very complex military operation. Certainly the stakes of you know, what these jet fighters are preparing to do is a lot higher than the consequences that we experience you know, on good and bad deliveries. Uh, but, but, the, but the general thesis and principles are very similar. Even for these fighter pilots who've gone through dozens of years of training, many, uh, actually a few of whom work at DoorDash, um, we know that you know, everything still begins with a checklist. And so for us, that checklist is uh, executed um, from a culture centered on three things for us. Accountability, transparency, and learning. Um, the reason why you know, we make every number public at DoorDash to our teams is because we firmly believe that if you, you know, have no idea of what your baseline is, there's no way that you're going to make any changes to any metric. And that's why leading with the numbers or with data is really an expectation. And that data is published to everyone. 
Second, as owners of the company, everything effectively is our fault. Um, if a kitchen can't go faster, if a dasher is lost on his um, all of these things are our fault. Uh, th that may sound harsh, that may sound frustrating, that certainly is painful, um, but it's what we do. And it's that type of commitment of making no excuses that's a core part of um, how we become operationally excellent. And finally, we learn. We learn about how to be 1% better every day. We learn about how to relentlessly focus on getting to the why so that we can be incrementally better every single day. And if we can do that, um, we certainly, again, can make better improvements to our software, better improvements uh, to our processes, so on and so forth. So we're at the very beginning at DoorDash. Um, it's been a very fast and short ride for us so far of three years. And in three years, um, we're very, very proud to have served over 30,000 merchants um, across 25 uh, major metro areas, 200 cities in the US and in Canada. Um, but for us, it really is just the beginning. Our vision is to build delivery networks for local businesses in every city. Um, and we think that's going to be a long road ahead. And we believe that if we can do that, we will have also created a new type of technology company rooted in deep technology and augmented by operational excellence. Thanks. So David, let me know that we have about five minutes uh, to you know, uh, chat about whatever is top of mind for you guys. So I'd love to hear um, on your mind. I think there's one in the back. Hi there. Uh, I think it's fascinating what you're doing, and I, I really like DoorDash and I use it myself, but I realized that in my folders, specifically for food, to do this exact same thing, there was like eight apps that I'm using. Uh, so I'm realizing it's becoming very commoditized or something, um, and it's really hard to know which one to use and what makes one better than the other. I'm curious to hear what you guys are doing to make sure that you're better than everyone else out there. Sure. So. I certainly agree. I, I, I think the space has never been cold. I think it's always been a, a, a very uh, a big opportunity, and, and therefore a lot of uh, a lot of visitors into the space. Uh, candidly, it, it, you know, my answer is really going to be about the leading indicators of what I believe matter, and it's really the two things I talked about today. If we can build the most efficient system, not only can we um, build the most sustainable cost. You know, basis for our business and for our customers, but we can also build the best experience. Um, and second, it really is about making sure you know, we get the basics right, right? That the items are there, that they are hot or cold, depending on you know, what you ordered, that they are there in the time that you, uh, that, that, that you um, ordered them in or expected them to arrive. And again, it's one of these things that sounds really, really simple, um, but, but it's very, very difficult to do right every single time. Um, and, and to me, it's really um, the, those two skills that ultimately will determine which companies make it and, 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 and which ones won't. Hi, Peter Krasilevsky. So you guys are all about food delivery. There's a lot of retail deliverers who are out there too, trying to cut into Amazon's impulse lead. What's your take on when you look at a retail company? Do you say maybe I can go there also? So the the, the system that we've built certainly, if if it can solve for the demands of a perishable product, perishable product can easily uh, you know solve for the needs of a less perishable pro perishable product. Um, I, I I think uh, look, last mile delivery is going to happen. Um, that's the starting point. The question is how is it going to happen? Um, I, I don't. I think if you ask yourself the question, if a customer wants something slower or faster, 
um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty much a rhetorical question, right, in, in terms of what the answer is going to be. Um, so for us, at least, it's first and foremost about getting what we do perfectly right. Right? I, I don't believe that uh, you can earn the privilege of doing something else if you can't even do the first thing correctly. And so once we perfect what we do correctly, you will see us go beyond food. Um, our systems were always built su to support all types of deliveries. And so, um, you know, speak to me soon. That, that, that may be something coming your way. And uh, Tony, uh, right here, uh, love your app. Um, and uh, my question is, I would love to hear your thoughts on the legal debates for uh, the 10 and 9 gig economy, you know, contractors. So I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I, pr I probably won't be able to argue the legal merits. Uh, I would say, I would say uh, two comments. F comment, uh, the first comment is really around uh, what is it that our, our, our dashers want? And what are the, you know, I guess more broadly speaking, what is it that the gig economy wants? Uh, because you kind of have to find product market fit with every audience, and that includes, um, in our situation, the dashers. Uh, first and foremost, the number one feature they want is flexibility. And so how do we do everything in our power to continuously offer them more and more and more and more flexibility? Um, is, and, and, and the second thing that I'll say here is um, how do we make sure that we can work together with, uh, frankly, a group of people, uh, other peers of ours, um, the government, regulators, et cetera, to make sure that these people um, are being supported uh, and heard in the way uh, that they should be. And so um, having both of those feedback mechanisms is really the way to, to, to move forward. I mean, the, the, the gig economy is not going away. Uh, these people, um, you know, in many ways are seeking these types of work. And so it's about how do we maximize those opportunities. I think, think that's it, or can I that's it, guys. All right, see you guys afterwards.